Hey y'all, Jordan here from The Crafted Piglet and this video has been long overdue. I've had a lot of people asking me if I could teach them my ways and quite honestly I have wanted to help each and every one of you but it's so hard to do that when I'm so far away. So this is the best way that I can do this for all of you. This is the first video in the video series and this will be all about how to actually pick up a skein of yarn and start to crochet. So by the end of this video, you should at least know how to pick your yarn, pick your crochet hook based on that yarn, how to start a chain stitch, and then also how to start a row of single crocheting. So I hope that this is helpful to all of you and let's just stop talking and go ahead and start. Today is really simple, all you need is a skein of yarn and a crochet hook and if you are planning on saving your practice swatch or whatever then you might need a pair of scissors i'm not saving this because i'm just using this as practice for you guys so i don't really need these now you're probably wondering how do i know what size crochet hook i need each crochet hook will have what size it is. You can kind of see it right there listed on it. So this is a size J. Um, this is actually too big of a hook for this yarn and how I know that is by looking at the back of this handy little label that they put on here. So each label will tell you what size crochet hook they recommend. So for this 100% acrylic medium weight yarn, they recommend that you use a US size I needle. Um, and again, I don't have the right needle, but or the right hook. I don't have a size I, so I'm just gonna use a J for today because that's what I had handy. Um, but it's really important that you try to use whatever crochet hook they recommend because that's going to affect your gauge. It's going to affect how your project turns out. So a gauge is basically just the number of stitches per inch and rows per inch um, using a specific size yarn and a specific size needle. So your gauge is what helps keep everybody on the same playing field, I suppose. Um, if you're not meeting gauge, then your project is not going to end up as the size in your pattern. So everybody crochets a little bit differently. I tend to crochet really tight. My stitches are really tight. My tension is really tight. Whereas somebody else might crochet um, a little bit looser. So their stitches are a little bit looser. Their tension is a little bit looser. So this is a way to make sure that we're all doing the same thing. So it's important that you do a test swatch each time before you start a project to make sure that your gauge is right. And you would just need to adjust accordingly if um, your gauge isn't right. So you would either need to tighten your stitches or loosen your stitches as you're crocheting. And if you are knitting, you would use a US size eight knitting hooks. Okay. All right, so when you get your skein of yarn, You'll probably notice that it's really easy and really tempting to just grab the yarn that's coming right off the top. I promise you will regret that decision. Don't use the yarn that's right on the top because when you crochet, you're gonna be constantly pulling and your yarn's gonna be constantly rolling and it's gonna get tangled, it's gonna get messy. You're gonna get really mad, I promise. So the best way to do it is by taking your yarn and finding the middle of your skein here, like right in the middle. Um, I just pulled all of this out. I'm sorry I didn't do it while you guys were watching. But you kind of just pull and you'll get this big glob out and then you just have to go and search for the end or the beginning of your yarn. So do it this way because you can just keep pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling and your yarn's gonna stay flat and you will thank me for it later, I promise. Now I have to find the end, there it is. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. 
Now there are a few different ways you can hold your crochet hook. I hold it differently from some people. I kind of like to hold it like I'm writing with a pencil. My sister likes to hold it like this, kind of like you're cutting with a knife or eating with a spoon, I guess. Um, I have actually been trying to do it this way because I found that my stitches tend to be a lot more even and not quite as tight, which is really good when you're making blankets, which is what I'm making right now. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it this way. There's really no right or wrong way to hold a crochet hook. You hold it however it is most comfortable for you because you are going to be doing lots of stitches for whatever project you're doing. And if you're not comfortable, then you're not going to want to do it. And also another thing I found is that if you do it this way, your hand doesn't cramp as much as if you were to hold it like this. Because if you think about it, if you write with a pencil too long, your hand cramps up. I found that my hand does not cramp up really at all if I hold it like this. So we're going to start with a slip stitch. You don't want to tie a knot on your crochet hook, and this is why. So I've tied a knot. It's nice and snug, right? You would think that that would be a good thing. It still kind of slides. But when I go to make a stitch, it is going to be a bit of a booger. Well, it wasn't that time. But it'll be a bit of a booger to get in that first stitch. But then if I were to mess up and I wanted to start all over, I would just have a big knot in my yarn and I don't want that. So we're going to do a slip knot because it's so much easier if you mess up. Let me show you. I'll show you how to do a slip knot if you don't. Whoop. I'm just getting too excited. I'll do that slower in just a second. <clears throat> but if I were to do a slip knot and I were to crochet and I mess up and want to start over you can literally just pull and it goes oh, back to normal. Yay, no knots. All right, so to do a slip knot, slip, did I say slip stitch? Slip knot. To do a slip knot, you're just going to wrap your fingers around or wrap your yarn around your fingers. And then I usually take my crochet hook and pull it up through. And that looked a little ridiculous. I always look ridiculous when I tie my slip knots. So there are lots of different ways you can do that as well. That's just how I do it. I do it differently every time. Um, I'm weird like that. So what's really important is going to be, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna hold my crochet hook in my right hand, but what's really important is this yarn over here. So this is going to determine um, how tight or how loose your stitches are. It depends on how you wrap it around your fingers. Everybody does this different too. I used to hold it a different way than I do now. Um, but I found that my pinky would cramp up and I just couldn't really get a grip on this yarn situation right here. So what I do is I wrap it around my finger a couple times. Not too tight, you want to be able to pull it really easily. But I wrap it around my finger a couple of times and then I still kind of hold it with my pinky. But this finger for me is more regulating the tension as opposed to my pinky. Alright, so... I also hold on to this string just this string just for um, an anchor, and I sometimes also hold on to the little slip knot too, just to give it a little bit more, um, just to make it a little sturdier for me in the beginning. So we're going to start with what is called a chain stitch. If you see this written in a pattern, it will be written as CH for chain. So what you do for a chain stitch, this is your basic foundation stitch for crocheting. You are going to yarn over and pull through that slip knot. That's going to be your first chain. And I'll show you how to count your chains in just a little bit. So we're going to chain 15. So that was 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, seven, eight, 
10, 11, whoops, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now I'm going to recount these because I was looking off somewhere else when I was doing that. Um, but how you would count your stitches, see how you can see all of these little V's right here. These individual V's are going to be your individual stitches that you make. And if you flip it over, it looks like a chain, which is why they call it chain stitch. But so let's count our stitches. So one, two, three, oh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Now you don't count this loop that's on your hook. This is not considered a stitch or a chain stitch. All right. So now say you want to turn your work and you want to go back this way. Well, we're going to do that and we are going to do what is called a single crochet. And if you were to see this in a pattern, it would be listed as an SC. So to do a single crochet, we're not going to put our first stitch in this chain right here. We're going to do the second chain. So one, two. So we're going to insert our hook just in that top, this little, this side of the V. We're going to yarn over, pull it through that chain stitch, and you have two loops on your hook, then you're going to yarn over and bring it through both of those loops again. All right, so we've done one single crochet. We're going to continue that all the way through. So I'll show you again. You're going to insert your hook into that half of the V, yarn over, pull through, yarn over again, and pull through both stitches. Now yarn over, if it were written, you would see it written as a Y-O in a pattern, but you don't usually see it. But if you ever see Y-O in a pattern, it's yarn over. So again, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through that chain stitch, yarn over again, pull it through both loops. All right, so we've done three single crochets. One, two, three. So I'm gonna speed it up a little bit and go all the way back over to this one over here. And so that was three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, Thirteen, I'm gonna slow down. Fourteen. Now you might be wondering well, what happened to that fifteenth stitch because we chained fifteen. Well remember we didn't go into that first chain stitch that was right next to the crochet hook. We went into the second one. So now we have fourteen stitches and we will continue to have fourteen stitches throughout the rest of this. So again, if we want to turn our work and do another row of single crochets, we would turn it. We would turn our work like we're turning the page of a book. And instead of going into the second chain from the hook, we're going to go into that first one. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull through that stitch, yarn over again, pull through the two loops. Again, oh and this time we're going to go through both of the V's that are on the hook. So insert your hook, chain, or 
yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through again. So again, we're going to go through both the full V, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through again. So we've done how many stitches? One, two, three. V, V, V. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue on through the rest. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Now the last stitch is usually kind of a booger, but you want to try and make sure you get both of the V's. It's kind of hard to see. You can kind of feel with your finger where the V is. You'll stick your hook through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through again. So we've done 14 single crochets. Now it's important that you make sure to count your stitches. That way as you progress in your project, your edges are nice and even. Um, if you don't have the same amount of stitching each time, then it can get really wonky and go in all sorts of different directions. Trust me, it's not pretty. I've done it lots of times. So again, turn our work like we're turning a page in a book. And we're going to go into that first stitch. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through both. Now I'm just going to go ahead and continue on because I want to show you how to count rows because that's really important too. If you're not keeping track of how many rows you've done, um, some patterns, it makes a difference. Uh oh, got a knot down here. Um, it makes a difference if you don't keep count of your rows. All right, almost to the end here. Again, it's always a booger on that last one. I think I might have gotten too much. Alright, so in order to count your rows, so we know this first row down here was our chain stitch, but how do we know how to count the rest of the rows? So you see this nice little chain stitch down here. This is going to be row one right here. See how row one looks different from row two? It's a little bit thicker on row two. And then row three is nice and thin again. So if we were to flip our work over, it would look a little bit different. So one, that first, well, excuse me, the first one is our chain. One, two, three. And that is pretty much it for, um, you know, starting a project. Now you could continue on if you want to keep practicing with this. It's probably a really good idea. Um, maybe since you did 15 stitches, maybe do about 15 rows like this, and you should end up with a nice square. Um, also, to get comfortable with doing chain stitching in the beginning. I would also practice doing a lot of the chain stitching just so you make sure you have the hang of it. Um, it can be a little difficult 
in the beginning, kind of awkward because you're not used to holding a hook and yarn at the same time, but just keep practicing and it'll get a lot easier and you'll be a lot more confident in your stitching. Now, if we were at the, at the end of our project, you're probably wondering, well, how do I finish it off? It's really simple. So once you get to the end, we got to our last stitch right here. What we're going to do is just yarn over and you're gonna pull it through and then you would snip this. I'll just snip it. I have some scissors over here. You can just snip it and pull it through. And you've got a nice little knot. And then if you have a tapestry needle, uh, we'll kind of go over that at some other time, but if you have a tapestry needle, you can kind of weave it through or sometimes I just kind of take my crochet hook and pull it through, um, you know, in random, random little intervals um, just so that you weave in those ends and you don't really usually see, um, you know, the ends of your yarn kind of flowing through your project if you do a really good job of weaving it in and out. Um, I didn't do a very good job right there, so I would probably just keep doing this for a little bit and then eventually uh, moving it down further into the project somewhere else just so it's um, really well hidden. But so you can't even see it in there. But yep, and then once you've, you know, weaved in enough ends, you can always just snip off the excess. And that is pretty much it for um, starting your first project. Um, if if you see anything in this video that might need to be tweaked or anything that might help you a little bit better or things that you aren't sure about, um, just let me know and I can try to address that in the next video or, you know, really it'll just help me know how to better help you in future videos. So I hope that this has been helpful and I hope that you're able to pick up a skein of yarn and start crocheting something. Um, that's it for this time and I'll see you next time.